Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the lovely land of Strasbourg World. So, uh, this is going to be my more or less weekly update. Uh, I know it's been probably a week and a half uh, since the last one, so I'm a little late on it, but uh, there's good reason for it. I've actually done a fairly decent amount of stuff with the route, uh, more than I usually get done in around a week's time frame. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad Museum is back to its current look, more or less. The only thing that's been added is this uh, I want to say uh, 210L, because uh, I think it just adds to the collection. Um, nothing has changed in the yard, uh, however, the uh, four cars that I created uh, have been added into the consist. So you can see that there is a Bangor Rustic car, there's a Rutland car now, and there is a another Baltimore and Ohio car. You can see now there's two. So that's pretty cool. Uh, other than that, uh, moving on, uh, nothing has changed here. However, I did go ahead and switch out some of the cabooses so that now there are no repeats in here. There may be the same colors, of course, but there are no repeated uh, cabooses. No two are exactly the same. Uh, anyway, moving on, we've got uh, some minor, minor changes with uh, editing the corn. I uh, shaved back some of it. I noticed that the route was running a little heavy. Uh, however, the uh, me deleting the corn didn't matter, it's still kind of blocky, and that's just because I have the render distance all the way to the end of the line, so it's rendering and everything. So I gotta figure out which splines are bogging down the route, and then get rid of them. Uh, because I have a 4080, this route should run perfectly fine on like ultra settings, and it doesn't, so uh, we're, we'll figure it out. But, uh, alright, the first huge project uh, that I've done was a complete revamp of Cherry Crest. So, much like how we're doing right now, I was driving down here one day uh, with a train, and I noticed that it something didn't exactly appear to be right. It didn't appear to be like it is today. And I realized that it was not expanded. So the original one stopped right about here, at this curved road along with the pavilions. Uh, however, it actually extends a lot further and has a lot more to offer, like the apple launchers, and then the paintball, and then the pedal cart thing, which is a classic car thing in, in this game, along with like the, the weird little hamster ball things, uh, and then of course all the shops and the tractors and the weird little racetrack. So I added all that. Uh, I got the loops the best I could, so I think that's a pretty cool little thing. I even added the overflow parking, and then over here, the parking lot over here is full, so I think that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, this took me quite a bit to do. I added in, you know, some buildings over here, along with the solar panels. I changed up some of the buildings, and then I added another one of these that is under construction, because this place is always getting new stuff, so a lot has gone on at Cherry Crest. Uh, the Apple launchers are, of course, cannons in this game. There's not really much I can do in the way of finding Apple launchers on the DLS, so uh, you kind of have to make do with what you what you have. So uh, this this is what I've done uh, with Cherry Crest. I think it looks good. There's a little bit of a reference to you know Charlie Brown. Uh, I won't make you find it because you won't be able to see it on the video, but. Uh, there we have a uh, Snoopy, but um, yeah, other than that, I think it's pretty realistic to what it would be. I added the barn here, I switched some things up. Uh, the only thing I have yet to find is uh, bounce houses for these, or otherwise I would change that. But uh, Oh, and then I also added these here. These are supposed to represent the tube slides that are on the hill here. And then this, I found, more uh, accurately represents the uh, weird little uh, mine thing that they got going on. It's one of those things where you get a sifter and then you sift for, you know, really small gems and whatnot. 
I forget what it's called, like pot of gold or something like that. But anyway, that's that's it for Cherry Crest. Uh, I just really wanted to add more into the uh, the barnyard experience. Is what all of the stuff to the right is called. Uh, so I did that. Uh, moving on, that was uh, huge project number one. That probably took me the most time out of everything. Uh, project number two probably took me the least amount of time to do, but it was editing this cut. So I really wanted to emphasize this hill over here. However, you can't extend the hill any farther towards the track or else it starts interfering with the track, meaning the track gets buried with the uh, ground. And obviously you can't have that. Um, so I had to get creative. So these are rock splines. They are used on the jointed rail uh, Datsun Junction route. Uh, so I did add these in here. I think it's pretty cool. I think it works fantastically. Uh, the only thing is it's just not a dirt, you know, thing, but, you know, details, details. And honestly, I think it looks uh, pretty good. So uh, other than that, I did go ahead and delete uh, these plant things here. So that way you can actually see down the track more, and I do have to adjust them down here. Uh, just give me one sec, I gotta turn up the, the tree detail here. So that way, you know, the trees look uh, better. <laughs> they don't look like two-dimensional trees. They are 3D trees. All right, moving on. Uh, I did change here the start time, so now you know you don't have a white thing anymore. Uh, going down here, project number three, uh, probably the second most intensive project, if I had to say. It's kind of a tie with number four, but uh, Byler's Crossing, so I redid this. So directly from my camera view, if you see these weeds that kind of are parallel to each other, that was the original pathway of this road. It went up to this tree right here and then cut across. Uh, if I zoom out here and you follow my mouse, it went from right about this number all the way up and curved along this tree line. Now in real life, it doesn't actually do that. There we go. It goes directly from here straight across to this church thing. So I did accurately ref reflect that the best that I could. Now realistically, it actually connects to here, so it'd be an even more steep thing. But from Google Maps, this is the the most appropriate that I could come up with. Um, so it takes a little bit of uh, topography adjustment, a lot of spline adjustments there. All of these splines here go straight across to here, so you're gonna have to cut a bunch of them out and then, you know, do your thing. It's, it's a little bit of a nuisance, but you can do it. And uh, yeah, so that was Byler's Crossing. Uh, I worked out most of the PBR textures to it. There is a little bit of weirdness going on here, but I can assure you it's not PBR texture based. It's the fact that the grass is combining with the gravel. That's what's giving it that weird effect. But like I said, when you're driving down with a train, you, you're not going to notice that. You, that's what you're going to see realistically. So uh, moving on, uh, probably one of my favorite things that I've done, because uh, like I said, this is probably my favorite spot to uh, get trains for filming other than up here at Carpenters because nobody ever comes down here to film. So I uh, really wanted to edit that to be more realistic. So moving on down here, uh, project number four. Uh, the final big, big project was uh, adding this ravine in here along with this creek. Uh, I really wanted to add it uh, as a kid I don't know why, but one of my favorite things to do would be at the end of the line when you're going through uh, this little, I used to call it a tunnel of trees, so I'm just going to stick with it. But I remember you used to be able to look down here and you used to be able to see the, uh, the creek as you went by, so I actually did that in the game, so now you can actually see it, and I think that's a pretty cool little uh, thing, so... We have that. Uh, in order to do it, it's a lot of a topography adjustment and uh, whatnot, but you can get it to flow naturally over there. And then the uh, river here is an actual water. It's just a water spline, but it kind of works the same as water. It's a 
it's just a rectangle and you adjust the height and then it fills into the topography as you adjust it but uh, one thing I haven't done is I haven't found the proper bridge uh, slash tunnel thing to go here but once I find it I will add that in it's already to go uh, but that's that's it for the major things other than that it's been little things uh, for instance here in paradise we have some uh, spline adjustments here so the path isn't like half buried by all the gravel textures uh, I know real to life it would be more like half covered in regular gravel because you know it's just a bunch of red stones mixed in and over time they you know get more mixed in with the other stones so it tends to look faded but I like this clean aesthetic so I uh, I raised the spline just a bit uh, before there was a lot more of this going on with it cropping through the texture so I did that uh, I also extended this road that goes from here down and speaking of road, uh, in the original it kind of comes out here, but then just rejoins up with this texture again. Uh, I didn't like that, so I actually extended it down to the track like it's supposed to. Uh, one of the big problems that I had was that the uh, thing was floating. You can see it here. So I had to get creative with how I could go about, you know, getting it to not float. And that's the best option that I personally can come up with. Uh, depending on what angle you look at, there's some PBR texture nonsense going on. But from the train, you're never going to notice it. So that that was uh, the little project there. But that's about it for Strasbourg. I, I really have been quite busy. Uh, so I haven't gotten a lot done, but at the same time, it really feels like I accomplished quite a bit uh, in uh, since the last episode of what all I've done. So uh, thank you so much for watching, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.